One thing about me is I didn't grow up learning how to preserve food. When I continued to expand my garden years ago, it came to a point where if I was going to continue growing more and more, I needed to learn ways to preserve food outside of dehydrating. Dehydrating is the gateway to all preserving, I feel. Canning can be a little bit more intimidating, especially if you haven't spent long hours in the kitchen before. It's definitely a labor of love. One to two days would typically wear me out when I would first get started, but now over the years, everything's gotten a lot easier learning all of the processes. Processes. So this week I decided I wanted to challenge myself to try to preserve at least one thing every day for the next week. I know over the years as I'm able to grow more and more, the amount I'll need to preserve this time of year will keep growing as well. I'd love to be able to grow years worth of all kinds of different foods and that takes a lot of hard work. To start my week of preservation, I got another batch of cherry tomatoes prepped for the freeze dryer. I got all of them quartered and onto trays and then to save on some freeze dried time, I put them into the freezer to freeze overnight. Then I moved on to what I planned for this day, which was canning some crushed tomatoes. I've never actually done crushed tomatoes before. It was one thing I really wanted to do last year, but unfortunately I didn't have that great of a harvest. All I did was shock the tomatoes to easily remove the skins. You do this by placing the tomatoes into boiling water for a few minutes and then immediately into an ice bath for a few minutes. And this cracks the skins, making them really easy to remove. I got them all cored and diced up and put two cups worth into my pan and crushed them up with a meat chopper. I got everything up to a boil and got the rest of the tomatoes diced and once all 12 cups were in the pot, I got everything up to a boil for about five to 10 minutes. Then it was time to can. This is one of those things that you can water bath or pressure can and my book gives instructions for both but today I decided I wanted to pressure can. I was filling pines up today and I took one out of a time, put one fourth of a teaspoon of citric acid into each jar and then filled it to a one inch headspace. When you're doing any pressure canning, you have a one inch headspace because of all the expansion that happens in the jar. I wiped the rim, I put the lid onto the jar and we got everything loaded into my pressure canner and moved outside. Since I do have a glass top stove top and I have this all American here, this all American pressure canner is pretty heavy and it's advised to not use on glass stove tops. So I've always pressure canned outside. I have to use 15 pounds of pressure when I pressure can because of my sea level. I got these processed for 15 minutes, which don't let that fool you because it's more like an hour because you have to let everything come up to pressure and then also back down to zero naturally. Processing times and canning are very deceiving when you are getting started. Good morning, guys. So the freeze dryer is finishing up with the cherry tomatoes and I'm going to go ahead and snag some herbs. I need to get some, I have a lot of basil I can go ahead and snag. I think I have some oregano I can grab, peppermint. I'm going to grab a bunch of herbs to throw into the freeze dryer. I definitely need to get on my A-game about throwing probably a batch in every week, every other week before the final stretch of the gardening season. I definitely need more because I did the freeze dried basil and I love it. The freeze dried oregano, I love it. I love the herbs freeze dried and recipes it's so good so i might get those cherry tomatoes out once they're done i already have jars ready to go um and then i'm gonna throw herbs in right after so that's the game plan there all right i might get this all washed up i have a bowl right here and i'm just going to do each herb individually swish it a handful of times rinse it off, go through my salad spinner, lay everything out and proceed on from there. I got a good amount of basil today. I did have one of my jars of tomatoes not fully uh, sealed. So unfortunately that's in the fridge. All right, all the trays are ready to go. We have oregano, sage, peppermint, goldie, honey bear, sunflower, which I'm really interested about, and then all of the basil. I'm gonna go check on the tomatoes and see if it's time to switch everything out. Right, and here is the after of the tomatoes. I'm gonna get them 
into some jars. I sterilized these jars last night. That way they were ready to go. And now I'm just going to fill the tomatoes into the jar. The freeze dryer has to cool back down before I can load the herbs in. So that is currently going on while I do all this. I'm so excited about these cherry tomatoes. I reconstituted them up. Um, and I'm really excited about like using these for pizzas and different pasta recipes throughout the winter season. I really don't like to buy tomatoes and I have a few summer recipes I really love and I only make them during summer when I have these tomatoes. Um, when I reconstituted them up, I got really excited about the potential of these recipes and using all of these and it's really cool to be able to put these uh, away like this and be able to use them during the winter months. I'm very excited about it. All right, I'm gonna get some oxygen absorbers for these and then put the lids on. And there we go. That's a good amount too for my recipes. So I like having them in the pint jars. Good morning. So the herbs got done uh, last night and I completely forgot that I wanted to prep okra and get peppers ready to throw in the freeze dryer after. I just had a really busy day yesterday. So since I never did that, I'm going to go ahead and harvest up what I currently got here um, and add it along while I do that. So yeah, I'm gonna get this okra. I'm gonna see what peppers I may have over there and then I'm gonna get the freeze dryer going again. You know, we also got some rain, so I'm gonna grab whatever tomatoes look ready while I'm out here too. I do have a few cucumbers. Ooh, keep hitting my head on all of these loofahs. <laughs> They, like these, I love these pink bumblebees, but the moment you get rain of any sort, they really do tend to crack if they are any bit slight red. And we got some more rain yesterday and last night. Okay, so here is the Goldie Honey Bear that I added to all the herbs when I was freeze drying. It actually turned out really, really cool and it kept its color really well. So that's really neat, maybe I need to grab another bigger one um, before they all die back. But here's what we're working with today. So I need to get these peppers and also okra into the freeze dryer. I need to blanch and chop up the okra and then I'm going to do my normal pepper routine of slicing and de-seeding so I can make different powders. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and dice up these bell peppers too and just have a diced bell pepper um, freeze dried. That way I can throw it into different recipes or soups and whatnot easily. I don't really need these here in the next few days and I feel like I should just go ahead and freeze dry them and then I need to get all of these tomatoes washed up in into freezer bags um, once I get most of my harvest completely throughout probably like in the next month or two depending on how busy I am I'm gonna get all of this process into sauce I already have a good amount of bags going at the moment I got everything chopped up and now I'm going to throw it into boiling water for two minutes, an ice bath for two minutes, kind of wring it out in my salad spinner to get any extra water and also the slime out. And then I'm going to lay them flat on a freezer tray. So here is all of the okra 
And now I'm gonna get the peppers going. All right, here's the bell pepper chopped and all my paprikas sliced up. Let's get this into the freezer. All right, so actually change of plans. Instead of freezing all of these tomatoes, I'm actually going to can up some more salsa. I forgot I had jalapenos, finally, that I needed to go ahead and uh, use. So I have these cayennes here that didn't fit in the freeze dryer. I'm going to actually throw these into the dehydrator and make more uh, red chili flakes. I could use a little bit more red chili flakes in my stash than a cayenne powder. So I'm going to dehydrate these and then I'm going to go through, get everything chopped to make salsa and then whatever tomatoes I don't use, I'm going to throw in the freezer. I'm not going to do as big of a batch of salsa as I did last time. I'm only, only going to do a single batch because I don't have enough um, cilantro to be able to do a double batch. Um, and I don't think I would have enough peppers either, but I have a mixture of jalapenos and serranos that I'm going to use today instead of the jalapenos and bell peppers I used last time to make a hotter salsa. Um, and I'm gonna do just one batch. So I'm gonna do all of that. So we're actually going to do some freeze drying drying and canning today i think is the lineup this is the fresh vegetable salsa recipe from the ball complete book of home preserving highly suggest this book if you're wanting to get into canning it breaks everything down um and if you didn't know, when it comes to using peppers, you can intermix your sweet and your hot depending on what your ratio is and what kind of heat you like for like your pickles or your salsa and stuff like that. So that's something I learned that I did not know my first few years canning about it and really nice to know. So all I do with the cayennes when I'm doing red chili flakes is top them and then I go through and cut a slit down the middle of the pepper just to expose that inside and then I just lay it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna get my tomatoes ready for salsa. I'm going to shock them to remove the skins. I'm gonna throw them in some boiling water and then into an ice bath for a few minutes each. That will help break the skins, being able to remove them very easily. I'll remove the skins, chop them up. I need seven cups worth today. And then I'm going to chop up my peppers, my onions, my cilantro, my garlic. Is that all I need? To chop up either way i'm going to be standing here chopping for a little bit but i wanted to give you the fyi on what i'm doing for salsa making i do the same process with the tomatoes that i did with the crushed tomatoes earlier i got seven cups all cored peeled and chopped i also got one and a half cups of chopped peppers two cups of onions three cloves of garlic minced up and half a cup of chopped cilantro i also added in one can of tomato paste and three-fourths cup of white vinegar along with half a teaspoon of cumin i got that all added to a pot and put over medium to high heat stirring every so often until we got to a boil i let my salsa cook down for about 30 to 45 minutes once everything was ready to go i got everything ready to can up into eight ounce jars or a half a pint these are the perfect little single size serving and I love being able just to stick these in my husband lunches really easily I filled each jar to a half inch headspace and then I water bath canned for 25 minutes I was able to get 10 of these eight ounce little jars today once I was done canning I got the rest of the tomatoes I needed to handle today prepped for the freezer I like to core my tomatoes before freezing but that is not necessary I've been layering my tomatoes into a single layer and getting as much air out as possible one of these days I will invest in a food saver I think it'll be really handy for stuff like this. The next few days I did not get too much done. It was the weekend and we were pretty busy. So I was able to get my freeze dried stuff done the next morning. I had the okra and the bell peppers and then uh, my paprika and the cayenne. So I just got all of this stuff jarred up with oxygen absorbers and put away, nothing too fancy. Then the following day, I actually went to a friend's farm and picked up some chickens and also eggs. And before going to bed that evening, I went ahead and got the eggs prepped um, into the freezer to pre-freeze before throwing them into the freeze dryer the next morning. All right, so today I'm getting some broth going. Yesterday, I picked up some chickens that a friend of mine butchered along with some eggs. I got the eggs in the freeze dryer, but I currently don't have any pints of chicken stock on my pantry and I like to use that for enchiladas and rice and just throw into recipes. I have some quarts, but I don't really like to open a quart if I only need like 
a cup, cup and a half. So I figured I would go ahead and knock out some broth because I always need some type of pint. And I also need to um, actually shred up some chicken. So I'm just going to do this all in one. So I currently have 32 cups of water in my roaster here and I'm just going to chop some onions. Um, I have four here that I'm gonna throw in. So I will flat out say I think the most underrated item if you're doing like any type of broth or batch like canning is a roaster. This was game changer last year. Last year was the first year I had it. And especially with sauce making days or broth where you are going to be in the kitchen pretty much all day. This thing is really handy because you can just kind of set it and forget it, which I really like. Obviously you need to stir and whatnot, but it's very helpful, especially like in a smaller kitchen like mine where I have limited space on like my counter and my stove top. I mean, obviously this is on my counter, but when it comes to canning days, this is just really nice to have. I love making broth. It's the one reason why I really wanted to learn how to pressure can a few years ago because nothing compares to homemade broth and broth can be pretty expensive. So it's just something that I really enjoy doing. Here's how everything looks in the roaster, just underneath all of the water. All right, so we are going to go ahead and put the roaster on like a medium high. I'll come through every so often and just turn it or stir it. This is gonna go for about two hours. Once the two hours is up, I will take out the cooked chicken and I will let that sit until it cools down, shred it all up. Um, and then I will drain all the broth and then it needs to cool to where I can scrape off all the fat to where I don't know if I would be able to get to this this evening. There's a chance I might be able to can this up this evening. If not, I will be canning it up in the morning. Once everything cooked for a few hours, I took out the chicken to let cool. While letting cool, I had another round of tomatoes I needed to prep for the freezer. I got five more bags this day. It was just one of those things where I had a bunch of tomatoes, but a few needed just a little bit longer and I was able to get a bunch knocked out over the last few days. Once the chicken cooled down, I shredded it all up and then I put it into the fridge to make some pot pie later that evening. All right, so now that I got the chicken out, shredded and done, I'm gonna go ahead and handle this broth now that it's cooled off just a little bit. I'm going to take a cheesecloth here with a stock pot with a like mesh sieve on the top and I'm just going to place the cheesecloth, set this kind of on the ground, that way it's easier for me to pour and then everything will be filtered through. And then I'm gonna let this broth cool down. Honestly, it's probably getting too late today to be able to get this broth completely cold and skimmed. So this will probably be cooling overnight and then we will can it in the morning. Once the broth was strained, I let it continue to cool for another hour before moving it to the fridge overnight. Letting the broth cool allows the fat to solidify, making it a lot easier to scrape off and remove. The next morning, I got my camp stove all set up again for pressure canning, and then I got my eggs out of the freeze dryer and put them away for storage. I got my broth out of the fridge and removed the fat, and then I got it back up to a boil and ready for canning. I will make a note of this. I have not mentioned this yet, but always make sure to add vinegar to your canner when doing any type of canning. This really helps helps your jars stay clear, especially if you have hard water like I do. That is just one of those tips that will stick with me until I die. Canning broth though is quite simple. So I fill each jar to a one inch headspace, put the lid on and then I place into the canner. I process pints for 20 minutes and quarts for 25. And again, I pressure can at 15 pounds of pressure for my location. So I will note again, the 20 to 25 minutes really is like an hour, hour and a half processing time. By the time you get all the jars filled, you get everything outside, you get it venting for 10 minutes because not only do you have to let your pressure canner 
vent steam for 10 minutes before you put your weighted gauge on. Then once you put your weighted gauge on, it takes about, I would say about 15 to 20 minutes for it to get up to pressure, depending on how hot it needs to get. And then you do your whole processing time, which is that 20 to 25 minutes. And then you turn off your heat and you have to let your canner naturally come back to zero, which takes about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on what you are doing. But honestly, it takes a lot longer than that little chunk of time. And I just want to make sure you guys know that because that is something I really never knew. And I was just very, very deceived when I got into canning. I was like, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. But really, you get the hang of it. It's just not that bad. Once everything cooled down, I was able to get my lid off. I will say, always remove your lid away from you. That way, no steam gets toward you and you could burn out of nowhere. Always remove it facing away from you. That really does help. Also, make sure once you remove your canner lid when you're doing pressure canning, allow those jars to continue to sit in your canner for 5-10 minutes. I advise more closer to the 10 just because it allows that air to circulate in your canner, slowly cooling everything down instead of just taking your jars straight out and having them just crack or shock from all the dramatic change in temp. One thing I keep forgetting to do is actually to buy a second rack for my canner. I have other racks, but for the All-American, it's like a different shape that I need to be able to stack pints. So I actually had to do two batches of broth this day. Um, I was able to probably do one batch if I had this um, one little rack I need, which mental note to me, I need to order that, but that is something I could have done instead of doing two full rounds of pressure canning and that would have saved me a good chunk of time. Okay, let's tally everything up for the week. So I got nine bags of tomatoes put into the freezer for sauce making. I will be doing this here in about a month or two once uh, the rest of my tomatoes really roll through. I might do this a little earlier. A lot of my tomatoes are almost done and whatever I, I'm debating if the rest of my tomatoes will just go towards more salsa making or if I will just throw it to all of my sauce. It really just depends on how the next month will go. Um, but I also had one of my crushed uh, tomato jars not completely seal. So I went ahead and got this frozen up. And then I also had a half pint left of broth that I couldn't throw into get being canned. So one reason I love freeze drying is for the reason, if you have a weird amount like this, you can still preserve it. So I'm gonna freeze dry down this broth that I have left over um, and make like a bouillon powder to throw into stuff. So very excited about that. Let me get the stuff back into the freezer and I'll go over everything else. I got 11 pints of chicken broth. Like I was mentioning, I really just needed some pints of chicken broth. So I'm really excited that I was able to get almost a dozen there. I got three pints full of freeze dried okra along with six pints of freeze dried tomato, like cherry tomatoes, which which I'm very excited about. I also got eight pints of the diced tomatoes. One of those pints was the one I just show you, but very excited about having some diced tomatoes. This was the first for a diced tomato, so very easy. Really enjoyed doing that. I also got a little bit of sage and peppermint freeze dried along with a whole quart of basil. And then I just topped off my oregano in here. It was about halfway down. Two eight ounce jars of chopped bell pepper ready to go that I could just throw into a recipe real fast. I got some paprika powder along with some red chili flakes as backups to go into the basement. And then I also got two quart jars of freeze dried eggs. And then I also got 10 eight ounce jars of hot salsa. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed just spending the week with me as I preserved up a bunch of different foods as I challenged myself to preserve stuff every day for a week. That was definitely a challenge for me, but I really, really enjoyed it. I feel so accomplished being able to put all of this down in my pantry. I do know it's one of those things that throughout the years, this is just going to get easier and easier. I will say that now that this is my fourth year of preserving food when it comes to just canning alone, it's just gotten so much easier. I know what to expect. I know that a 20 minute processing time truly means over an hour. So like, it's one of those things where it really isn't as hard as it once was. And if you are getting into canning, just know it does get easier. And I never grew up with this. So learning how to spend this much time in the kitchen and learning all these skills has definitely taken me a long time. I will say freeze drying, 10 out of 10. I love freeze drying. I've only been freeze drying now for about five, six weeks. And by far, it's my favorite way to preserve food. I don't have to stand in my kitchen most of the day throw it in, it's handled, but I obviously have a place where I love canning when it comes to my broths, all of my tomatoes, salsas, you name it, like 
there's a time and place for everything. And I really hope I just kind of showed you guys that you can dehydrate, can, pressure can, you can freeze dry, you can do all sorts of things and this is the outcome. So I hope you guys enjoyed spending the week with me as I preserved all different kinds of foods. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.